Today we're going to take a closer look at one of the more influential electronic records to drop in the last 20 years, and more specifically a track off that record. We're going to create a song of our own and attempt to emulate the sound of the record and embody the spirit of that artist during that time. We'll cover equipment, production techniques, and popular effects the artist uses to create that sound. By the end of the video we'll have a finished song of our own. Before we begin, let's briefly talk about the artist that we're spotlighting today, Tycho. Tycho, whose real name is Scott Hansen, began making his music in the early 2000s, with a discography spanning over four studio albums, multiple EPs. Tycho has established himself as a leading figure in the electronic music scene. From his debut album past his prologue to his latest release, Weather, Tycho's music is a journey through a sonic landscape of ambient downtempo and IDM soundscapes. We're going to take a deep dive into the album Dive that released in 2011. When this album released, it really had a big impact on me as a musician. I've probably listened to this album over a hundred times. The album front to back is great, but today we're going to look at a specific track called Adrift. Adrift is a great track and it features beautiful acoustic guitar and it's accompanied by a subtle hip hop beat throughout the entire track, beautiful synth work, and there's a great sense of nostalgia and longing created from the song. Let's get started. Here I have the Digitone and Octatrack and the Auto Machines Bomb. Um, if for anyone doesn't know, um, the uh, Octatrack is a sampler, the Digitone is a digital synthesizer, um, and the Auto Machines Bomb is a compressor. So I have the um, I have the mustard and ketchup colored cables going uh, into the Octatrack here and then um, the outputs of the Octatrack going into the bomb. And then actually off screen, I have a um, mixer that the bomb is going into. And then the mixer is going into my audio interface, which is going into Ableton. To recreate Tyco, I figured, okay, I wanted to uh, have a sampler, right? There's a lot of uh, ambient uh, vocal samples that Tyco uses, uh, live instrumentation like guitar. It would be very hard to do that just on like a Syntac and a Digitone. So that's one reason I wanted to incorporate the Octatrack. And then uh, the Digitone, I just think is perfect for those lush synth sounds that Tycho is famous for. I mean, he uses analog synths famously for a lot of his recordings. But since I am an, you know, an electron person and I like to um, experiment with a lot of digital synthesizers as well, I wanted to recreate it on the uh, Digitone. So I'll go over the bomb, but I'm just using it to sweeten up the sound. It's an analog warmer. I actually have a video, I'm gonna link it right here if you wanna learn more about the Auto Machines bomb. But just to give it a little bit more of a round sound, and uh, especially since we're emulating Tycho, which he kind of has that tape, analog, nostalgic type of um, sound, I thought, you know, run the whole thing through an analog um, compressor that might help get us there. What we're going to do is start off um, on track one. And on track one, um, I'm going to go to, you'll see that I have only track one is um, active right now. And um, we're going to go ahead and just find some samples. So samples I found off Splice. I find a lot of my samples off of different the sources. I made a video recently, like it right here, on Electron um, sample packs. And I'm actually using some of the Electron samples in this, um, or I plan to use those samples in this video. But um, I got the drum tracks off Splice. So I'm going to go ahead and just listen to some of our, um, our drum loops that we can look at. That one's really nice. This one's nice, very slow. That's just the kick that I found I liked. That's a lo-fi hi-hat. That's a snare that I wanna possibly layer. And that's a clap that I don't know, maybe we'll use, maybe we won't. Another snare. But I want to go back to this one. I kind of like this one. Looks like it's originally at 60 beats per minute. Which is fine, um, because we want to do something slower. When I looked at the Tycho song, 
I believe it's around anywhere from 70 to 80 BPM. So for this track, um, we're going to go ahead and do a global BPM of 70. Um, also what I'm doing here, um, if you're curious, I have the MIDI being sent to the Digitone. So this is the master, this is the slave. This is going to drive the, you know, whole song. So um, I don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and um, I, I went ahead and loaded that sample that we liked on track one. Let's go ahead and listen to that. That's good. It's really a grimy sample. I hear crackling and pops in the background. Um, and um, I think it already has a good vibe and the hats in the background. That da, da, that um ride that's just kind of, it really has a nice different sound to it. So I like that. I want to use this as our main drums. Um, and we may layer it, we may change it. So um, what I'm doing with the Auto Machines Bomb, if you're if you're curious, I'm just using a preset that I love. If I click preset right here, and I um, you'll see that that is the uh, third row top, third row bottom, and it's I think if I just hit low cut, it, it that's the preset. Um, I really like that. I want to tune it down a little bit. It sounds good, but I want to tune it down. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna just go to pitch. And I'm going to just tune it down a little, see what it sounds like. So I'm giving it a more of a, you know, and that's the whole premise with uh, this and The Last Artist. But for the how-to, you know, a lot of detuned, um, analog, fuzzy, round sounds. I think that's the whole, you know... Thing we're going for here. So uh, tuning down the drums just a little bit, this is what we got. For me that works. We're on pattern one. Uh, the next thing I want to do is um, we're going to go ahead and look at um, the diggy tone. And I have a bass sound that I found. And if you see me get stuck on this skin here, it's, it's the worst skin. And <laughs> the buttons stick as you'll see. So um, that's what's going on there. But yeah, pretty much um, track three, let's go ahead and um, it's called the E-Bass. Uh, I found this preset called E-Bass SM. And let's go ahead and listen to what we got. That's what it sounds like there. And so, um, Found that bass. I didn't really tweak the preset that much at all. I really liked it. Um, and I just wanted something simple. I went and I listened to a drift and I was like, okay, that's just a really fat bass. It didn't sound like a real guitar bass, but it was a synth bass and it was pretty clean like this one. You know, it didn't have too much distortion or... Uh, so I found that one. I liked it. And what I did is... I turned on Portamento, I turned up um, the timing a little bit here, and uh, the length, if you, you know, see, if you hold, if I hold this one down, you'll see that goes eight steps right there. Um, so I messed with the length to make sure that it was more of a um, sustained bass line. But I created a, um, a bass line that sounds like this. There you go, you can hear that portamento slide there. Right, just a simple little bass line that I thought sounded fun. Nothing crazy, and let's just listen to it with the drums. Again, the diggy tone is being sent into the Octatruck. fun. It de definitely has, you know, that thick bass with the hip hop sample drum sounds of a drift. It has that vibe. The next thing I want to do is beef up the drums. 
and uh, we'll come back to the baseline. But as you'll see that I have I have this, um, I'm not using these three tracks, I'm just using track three on the diggy tone, that's our bass. Um, and uh, I'm just using two tracks, that's all we have, um, track one, track three. And what we're going to do now is, um, if you listen to a drift, you'll see that the drums kind of progress in a way where um, they start out beefy, but they get beefier. They get um, the snare hits harder. The hi hats are a bit more clear and come in, and and the tempo changes. So I wanted to add something like that. So we'll take away our bass for now. Just have drums, and that's our drums. Now what I wanted to do, you might remember that snare sample earlier. Um, I want to use that snare sample on track five. So if we go to track five right here and um, see what we got. Oh, that is the hi-hat. We'll start there. So on track five, I found a hi-hat sound right here. And um, if we go over to um, track five, I went ahead and I laid down some trigs and I just did the same thing for um, each page and pretty simple pattern we can actually listen to what it sounds like without the drums uh, this is what the hi-hat sounds like whoops let's go ahead and unmute it and what I'm doing here is um, I am actually uh, if you go to uh, track 5 and you look, we have a delay here, and these are the settings we have. And we have a filter. And you'll notice that I have some, some top end taken off um, right here. That's what it sounds like with um, no filter. So kind of give it a more lo-fi sound. Uh, uh, I thought it fit the song better. So we can hear what it sounds like uh, with the drum, uh, hip hop loop, and the hi-hat now. Uh, let's listen to it. Bring the hi-hats in. Subtle difference, but noticeable. Great. Next thing I want to do is work on the drums. So we have one, we have five. Don't ask me why I'm on five. I think I just like to use five for hi-hats on the octa track, and that's where I got that from. Um, we're gonna go to track three. And on track three, I have a snare sample that I found. Um, I'll link, if you're interested, I'll link where I got that from, but uh, it was from Splice. And you know, just pretty normal. Kind of see here, there's some reverb on it. If we look at um, the track, you'll see that I have on each page just the snare hits. And you might be like, where did, you know, how did you know where to put those? If you just listen to the song and see where the snare hits. Five, 13, right? So the one thing I did um, end up doing is I took them a little off the grid. They're not completely quantized. so. Which you'd imagine, I'm using like a lo-fi hip-hop loop in this song. Those are never perfectly quantized. That's what gives it the lo-fi vibe. So um, if you look at um, track five here, for example, what I did is um, you can choose on the Octatrack, um, you know, if you're going to wear on the grid, how, you know, how quantized you'll be. So you'll see that I am, that's on the grid, and I'm at, it's a one over 384 or negative one over 384 so just a little bit on the left if you will and I just took that and I copied it pasted it and I put those just on each page I, I think I can do something cooler if I want to but I thought I would just kind of follow what our samples doing so we can see what it sounds like without our uh, so this is just the our initial sample now let's go ahead and add our snare Add our hi-hats. Great, so hopefully you can hear how that's made, uh, I think the whole drums section a bit better, more organic and just a fatter sound. So I think we're okay on drums right now. We're gonna go back to our bass, unmute our bass here. 
and just listen to the whole thing with the bass and with the drums so far. Awesome. So I like to have bass lines that alternate and change and I, I'm very, uh, it's just what I do. So I have pattern one, we're going to pattern two real quick and um, work on that other bass line. So I'm um, going to copy over pattern one to pattern two. I've already done that and um, we're going to go over to our bass and I'm going to work on something new. So we'll start out with the same type of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I want to have the ending of that change. So, um, Pretty cool, right? I think it sets the stage for melodies and, and adding other stuff to it. Okay, so next thing, we're gonna go into Diggy Tone. Um, track one, I'm gonna turn off our bass for now and just focus on track one. And track one, you'll see that I have um, Boards of Canada or BOC keys. This is a sample that I got in that soft, not soft spoken, but the, um, <laughs> Gosh, I forget the name of the sample pack. I did a video on it and uh, basically let's check out what that sounds like. Right, um, I went ahead and, and did a couple things to it. I went into the um, reverb. I turned the reverb like way up. Delay, there was no delay I believe um, and the chorus I altered a little bit. So almost using the stock preset here. And I think that's fine if you find a preset you love. Um, sometimes I'm just trying to make music and you can get really caught up into the whole making original sounds thing, um, synthesizing your own sounds. And I do, I do it from scratch sometimes, but oftentimes I feel like it's almost easier to use presets to actually make new music. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're just using this preset on and modified the reverb and delay mostly. Um, but I already kind of messed around with the melody. So let's go ahead and listen to what I have. It's kind of an odd one, but I think it's kind of uh, interesting. So um, yeah, let's listen to it. And that was actually pattern two. I made them slightly different, pattern one and pattern two. Here's pattern one. I just kind of listened to it and I added, I actually wrote that melody very quickly and I liked it. I tried working on different melodies off camera and I really just liked this one for some reason. So um, let's check it out with the bass. Um, we're gonna just do pattern one for now. We got the bass, we got our BOC keys um, and we have, you know, one, three and five. Um, Track eight is our master. I'm using that because if, if I want to, you know, use the slider for, um, you know, performance, which I may do when I record the final song, I have that available. Um, and I can show you that later, but that's, that's why track eight's unavailable. So um, let's just listen to what we have so far. So 
I lied. I played um, patterns one and two there. Um, but that's that's kind of the verse I'm thinking. We'll have that. It will repeat. We can have different things happen with that. Let's go ahead and look at track two. And I want to have some type of pad playing um, very lightly in the background. So let's just see what we can do. So you'll see that I have this pad called Untuned that I found and I've tweaked it a little. Um, it wasn't actually a pad, I turned it into a pad. So it was more of a bell sound. Here it is. So this is what I found it. So it's from a sample pack that I got. Um, and this is what it sounds like. So it's kind of like a bell sound. Actually it sounds very Boards of Canada-like, very Tycho-like already. But I wanted that to be a pad. So I went ahead and uh, changed the attack, changed the release, and then we have this sound now. Um, I just kind of went into here and I created some, some pad sounds, uh, basic chords. So if we listen real quick. That's what I'm doing there. I went in and I, I held down this and I, I hit add notes and but these are my notes a B E and F sharp and I'll put what the chord that is on the screen but um yeah so that's what I have going on so if we just listen to it it goes like this and then nothing on two and then on three like that Pretty good. So let's just listen to it now in context with um, the whole song. So we have bass, Boards of Canada melody, and pad, um, plus our just drums basically. Pretty chill, I think. Uh, very different sounding than a drift, but um, I think we're getting there. And I think when we get to the chorus, there's going to be a bit more of a direct connection to what a drift sounds like. Um, so the only, I have one more uh, track that I can use on the diggy tone. I just wanted to add some type of clap. You can see the preset. It says clap SM is the preset I'm using. And if we just um, listen to it. a clap with a ton of delay and reverb on it. And it's happening here um, on step 13, page two. And it's also happening on step 13 on page four. So, um, and I think I have some probability that I added. So you don't want these claps going off every chance they get. So if I think if I go to the trig page, I'm gonna add some probability. I don't think I've done that yet. I only want these to go off like 30% of the time, 33%. Yeah, so we have the probability set to 33% on both pattern one and two. And it's gonna be hard to tell, but we can listen to the whole thing with the clap and yeah, we'll just you might be able to hear it. It's just gonna be a subtle reverb delay clap that's in there. <laughs> You might have just heard it right there. So that is, we've pretty much maxed out the diggy tone um, for our song, um, at least for this verse part, um, what we're gonna be doing with it. Next thing, we have some additional tracks that we can uh, play with on the Octatrack. So one thing I wanna do is add some background sound. Um, Tycho and a lot of these artists are famous for doing this. They'll put in sounds of waves crashing or birds chirping or water, you know, going across a creek. Um, one thing I love to do is add that in. And 
Uh, I've done that in a lot of my tracks, but um, it kind of gives the, the sound a bit more glue. And um, uh, I have one on here that's just people talking in the street. And I like that one. I usually put that on a track and I'll put it down very low. And it's just good to add that extra layer that binds everything together. So if we just look at, we're gonna turn off the diggy tone. And if we just look at track two, we can see what we have going on. And it's just a sample. I got this sample a long time ago off Splice, I think. Uh, you can find this stuff for free on the internet. It's not hard to find back, you know, just people chattering in a big city type of a sound, but let's listen to it. Wonder if I pitch it up. So I'm gonna pitch that up a little just to make it sound less alien, less alien like. Okay, and we'll listen to the whole thing now with our background sound. So you can see what we're going with there. Next thing we're gonna do is um, some more vocal ambiance that happens. So on track four, I have like a reverse sample, a reverse vocal, um, also from a sample pack. You can create these very easily yourself as well, but I'm lazy. So let's listen to what we got on track four. I wanna make sure it's in the right key, but I think this might sound good. Let's go ahead and find something new. Here's some breaths that I have. I like that. Let's just use that for now. It's very taiku y. good for now for our verse and pattern three and four I already have a baseline I really like and it's gonna go like this um, So this is actually my favorite part of the song so far. I almost am just using the verse to get to the chorus. Um, I, I thought about making the chorus just the song for a, a moment, but uh, you can see this is what I've, I've kept a lot of the instrumentation the same for the chorus. Uh, I added one thing, or I'm going to add one thing, but pretty much you'll see what we have going on. Um, when I add all the other tracks back on the diggy tone, this is what it sounds like. And we're using pretty much everything. We haven't used these tracks yet. can hear what I'm hearing and that makes sense to you but uh yeah that's that's what I have for the chorus so far I really like that progression um and um I have to tweak the volume levels and, and mix it but that's what I have so far um one thing I wanted to add is the vocal samples uh Tycho is famous especially f during music that came out during his dive record for using vocal samples children laughing um, ambient recordings, old news broadcasts and radio recordings. I actually decided to try and <laughs> I was I was looking for like 
stock recordings of kids and I was like I have kids myself um so I just had my five-year-old record some stuff and uh I actually found um uh one of the takes uh, she did and I liked it so I uploaded it and I have it on um track seven so if we go ahead and listen I had her say a bunch of random stuff that you might hear in a Boards of Canada or Tycho song. I kept thinking of that one Boards of Canada song where they go, orange. orange. <laughs> but I was like, you know, I don't think I'm going to do something like that. So I, um, I had her record some stuff, though, and this is what I found I liked. And I think I have it set to um, only play uh, a certain percentage of the time. So let me see real quick. Where are you? Right? <laughs> Something you feel like you might hear in a um, Boards of Canada or Tycho song. So um, one thing I want to look at is if we can go ahead and look at track seven um, and go to here. You can see that the original tempo is 104 for some reason. Let's see if I change that to 70 if it makes it any better. Where are you? Where are you? So you guys can hear right away that sounds way better. Um, and, um, you know, I, I just made the original tempo match what this beat global BPM is, which is 70. So just another pointer for anyone trying to do this stuff. If you're uh, loading, if you're customizing samples in your DAW or loading um, custom samples onto your Octatrack, go in here to the original tempo and make sure it matches your global. So now that we have that, we can kind of hear what it sounds like all together. And I was thinking about just having that phrase happen during the chorus. I'm not sure yet, um, but we'll just do the chorus, which is patterns three and four. This is just gonna stay on pattern one the whole time like it has been so far. <laughs> Great, so it's really starting to sound like a Tycho song to me at least. Um, I could totally imagine this on one of his old records, not his newer stuff, but um, one thing I wanted to add, and I've never really done on uh, an Electron Box ever, so this is really cool for me. Um, I wanted to add some acoustic guitar. Um, if you listen to oh, Adrift, the song that we're trying to emulate, there's a breakdown where some acoustic guitar comes in. It's really pretty. And I play guitar, and I happen to have a really nice Martin OM um, acoustic guitar. So I'm going to go ahead and whip that out and try to um, record uh, some type of riff over the chorus. I think having the guitar come in on the chorus makes the most sense. Um, and I'm going to have a little breakdown part, I think, where there's just guitar and synth, similar to a drift. <laughs> Okay, so um, here it is dry. Okay, let's go ahead and throw some reverb. I'm gonna just throw the stock reverb uh, from Ableton 11 on here. Let's listen to that. Sending a little better already. Throw an EQ8 on here. I'm just using the stock Ableton stuff right now. 
think I'm going to go ahead and remove the warp here and just uh, use the sample naturally. Let's see it matches the uh, BPM and here it is matching our beat. Awesome. So now that we um, have our guitar recorded and we're happy with it, we're going to get it on the Octatrack. And um, I'm going to put it on track six. That was our last available track that we have. Just like the last um, sample, what we need to do is go into the editor, go into um, FX1. We're going to see, you'll see right here, it's at 140 for some reason. We're going to drop that to 70 and it should sound just right for what we're trying to do. That's good. I like that. And now what I'm thinking about is having just the guitar and um, just these two. Let's see how, it's, see how it sounds. This would be like the breakdown. So we have the verse we just listened to, which is patterns one and two. I consider three and four kind of like the chorus or the the hook of the song. And then um, we have our break uh, breakdown. Let's listen to just, we haven't assigned it. We're just using patterns three and four for now and patterns one and two, but we're just using the guitar and the Boards of Canada style detuned synths, so. able to use that high cut filter on the bomb there it's one of the reasons I like having the bomb as well for live performances um, I can go ahead and do that and I think I would imagine on this part we would probably do that so if we listen to it again and just kind of turn bring it in very slowly to do a really quick and simple iteration of a Tycho song. Use, like I said, only really the 11 tracks, if you will, um, given to me on the Diggy Tone and Octatrack. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and play around, add a couple samples, just kind of tweak the um, song, and then uh, show you guys the final. And uh, hope you enjoy. <laughs> 